Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Saturday, August 19th. This is Gina McGuire. Over the next few days, we will see increases in lightning across the Great Basin. Today and tomorrow, isolated thunderstorms are generally expected in some of the same areas we've been seeing them recently, where fuels have moderated across Utah and Nevada. However, today we could see some breezy winds along with low relative humidity over the central Idaho mountains. Also on Sunday, we might see some isolated lightning activity develop a little bit further northeast into Nevada, and these thunderstorms would be on the drier side, however coverage will remain fairly isolated. It's really Monday into next week that we'll see a greater increase in overall lightning coverage from south to north across the Great Basin. Over the last 24 hours, we've only seen some very isolated thunderstorms across Utah and Nevada and also along the Sierra Front, which only produced light amounts of precipitation. Great Basin fire activity yesterday was light across the area. Over the last week, we've seen precipitation mainly across the eastern half of the Great Basin, with areas across much of Nevada on the drier side. However, over the last 30 days, due to the monsoon moisture in place most of the time, we had above normal precipitation for the southern half of the Great Basin and much drier conditions further north, especially in the central Idaho mountains. How this is reflected in our current fuel conditions? We can see ERCs are highest across Idaho, especially the central Idaho mountains, where ERCs are above the 80th to 90th percentile. ERCs decrease as we go further south where that moisture was in place in the southern areas of the basin, but ERCs have been increasing and are now above the 70th or in some areas 80th percentile across southern Idaho, northern Nevada, and northern Utah, and it is in this area also where we have the highest grass loading. You can see from the images on the right that ERCs have increased fairly rapidly across Idaho where we had some cooling and some precipitation with a cold front earlier last week and also even over northern Utah ERCs have increased to near normal. 10 hour fuel moisture is still very low across all areas of the Great Basin as drier air has been in place. The satellite loop from this morning shows high pressure dominating the southwest with weak low pressure off the southern California coast. This will allow that moisture to increase further north today Today you can see some cloud cover right along that stalled frontal boundary over central Nevada and central Utah, and it is this area that we will see thunderstorms redevelop again this afternoon. Looking again at the conditions for today, we do not have any high risk across the Great Basin as fuels have moderated in most areas, but still remain on the drier side over western and northern areas. Again today we'll see most of the moisture right along that stalled frontal boundary across central Nevada and Utah. You can see from the image on the left where we are expecting those isolated showers and thunderstorms with the greatest coverage over parts of the Uinta Mountains and Uinta Basin and parts of eastern Utah. Winds will not be a major concern today across Nevada or Utah except near thunderstorms where outflow boundaries are expected. We will have some breezy northwest winds over parts of central Idaho along with low relative humidity. Wind gusts will generally be around 25 miles per hour. As we move into Sunday, We see a little bit deeper moisture move into far southern areas in southern Utah and the Arizona Strip, with even some weak moisture up into northeast Nevada. Still dry conditions persist across Idaho, with no high risk expected. On Sunday, you can see where we are expecting a little bit greater shower and thunderstorm coverage with deeper moisture over southern areas of the Great Basin into central Utah, And then moisture will be much more limited over central and northeast Nevada. However, it's these thunderstorms that may be a mix of wet and dry, with coverage still being on the isolated side. Again, winds won't be a major concern with the exception of outflow winds near thunderstorms and still some breezy northwest winds over central Idaho with those dry conditions. As we move into Monday, you can see that deeper moisture start to push north over the southern half of the Great Basin and also you can see the line of the eclipse through Idaho where we will continue to see drier weather. We do not have any high risk issued for Monday either. However, you can see areas of Idaho will also start to dry out a little further in the central mountains and even southeast Idaho, again where dry weather has been in place for the last several days. You can see on Monday where we're seeing those scattered showers and thunderstorms where really lightning coverage increases across the southern half of the area. However, these thunderstorms will likely be producing some wetting rains and certainly have higher relative humidity. You can see the image on the right, greater potential for outflow boundaries as those coverage of thunderstorms increases. However, winds on Monday across Idaho will be decreasing from what we will see over the weekend. Overall forecast amounts of precipitation, so generally wetting rains in areas where we will see the thunderstorms. However, the heavier amounts will be somewhat spotty until we get into early next week. As we move through next week on Tuesday, that moisture 
pushes further north into northern Nevada, northern Utah, and even far southern Idaho, therefore lightning activity will be pushing north into those areas as well. We do not have any high risk issued, as although lightning coverage will be pushing north into areas that have been dry, it looks like moisture will be increasing fairly rapidly, so these storms should be on the wetter side. As we move into Wednesday, we see that greater push of moisture all the way north into the Great Basin into the central Idaho mountains. It's this area that we're still showing brown. We have not issued any high risk yet, as models have been having a hard time with timing moving lightning that far north, but we may have some high risk issued as lightning initially pushes into the central Idaho mountains that have been the most critical area of the Great Basin with regard to fuels. Otherwise, you can see moistening of the fuels further south as scattered showers and thunderstorms will continue. On Thursday, we have drier air moving into western and southern portions of Nevada. This will push the lightning activity mainly over the eastern half of the Great Basin. Again, no high risk is issued as most of these thunderstorms will be on the wetter side. By Friday, that drier air moves over the eastern half, or the western half rather, of the Great Basin into western Idaho, pushing most of our lightning activity into Utah, northeast Nevada, and eastern areas of Idaho and Wyoming. You can see the forecast amount of precipitation for the next seven days. Again, as that moisture pushes north, we'll have greater chances of at least lighter rainfall as you move up into Idaho towards the middle of next week. In some areas, we'll see wetting rain with the better potential of more significant wetting rains in areas that the moisture will be more prolonged across Utah, southern Nevada, and the Arizona Strip. As we look towards the very end of August and into the 1st of September, we will continue to see warm temperatures and near to below normal precipitation expected across the basin. That concludes our briefing for today. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Thank you for listening.